New London drummer Matt Covey loves his jobs. He plays in so many different bands and in so many different styles, it's almost hard to believe. From playing locally with the Franklin Brothers, to touring the world with such gold. And while his musical education includes programs in jazz and classical music, he sometimes had to learn the hard way. My second legit band I was ever in, I was 18. The band was called Perfect Stranger. They introduced me to uh, what you might call the uh, West Coast fast beat for punk. I did some other version of that and they wanted me to do that one. So I think they found a motorcycle helmet in the, uh, at the practice space where we were at. They put the helmet on my head and they played the fast beat like that on my head so that I, I, ostensibly to drill it in so that I would not be able to forget it again. Suicide Dolls is a, a power trio, so it's simple and direct. I'm trying to make a melody out of just, uh, you know, only a few couple elements, and that melody I'm trying to echo is built off what's happening in the band, the guitars and stuff. At least two-thirds of my insides is still a kid. A lot of my good friends still say things like, you are the youngest old person in this band. I'm a super curious person anyway, but I think seeing other people have a genuine emotional reaction to things is usually my first catalyst. And I, I want to connect to it the way that I saw that person connect to it. And the only way to do that is to, is to learn it more, like um, to study it and to like figure out and crack that code. m is a 11-piece uh, like party reggae, ska, rock steady band. A more typical uh, uh, reggae-oriented uh, uh, song that Hemsteadies plays is called uh, When Dead Are Undead. There's a couple different reggae sounds in there. There's the one drop is probably the most well-known reggae beat. Called that because you drop beat one. You don't play beat one on the bass drum. In Western music, normally on drum set, everyone's nailing beat one, and that way, you know, uh, everyone knows where it is, including the, the audience. One drop reggae, no bass drum on beat one. One, two, three, four. It's on beat two and four with the click, with the click. Then there's a dance hall type reggae uh, a version of it uh, that in the song. That rhythm is connected to Brazilian music, it's a bione, it's connected to reggaeton, it's everywhere. People that play really complicated Latin music uh, or people that play really complicated African music, they grow up doing it and usually nobody teaches them how to read music. They just show them the rhythm and they've heard it forever and it's just there, but for the rest of us, you have to start by learning the mechanics and the basics of, of whatever the beat is. It's one thing to be playing something that's music written on a page and be playing it technically accurately. It's another thing to connect with it on a different level. It's funny though, it's, you've cr I've crammed so much stuff in, into my brain that like some of those synapses are just clogged now. I have to, <laughs> I need the quick reminder. Okay. This band is a hardcore band, originally from South Florida. They do a very sort of specific brand of blending metal and hardcore and punk. A lot of bands do that now, but Shiloh started in like the mid 90s. Certainly aggressive, pretty technical, and like highly arranged. The word it comes down to is space, and any, any genre I'm doing, even if it is the faster stuff, um, you know, there's a lot of notes and there's a, in some of that stuff, and there's a lot, a lot of notes to play and execute, but cracking the code comes down to the negative space between notes and how you treat that. And even though we're talking about space in which I'm not actively playing a note, 
I want to be playing the space. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but I want to be uh, uh, manipulating the space to get the feel that I'm looking for. Young Pandas is, um, we like to think of as uh, an indie R&B band. And for me, the drumming is, I'm trying to reference things constantly and even like reference drum famous sounding like samples of other drummers and make it sound like the sample. I really love reverse engineering that kind of stuff to make those sounds. I might put a tambourine on here. Instead of a, a, a hand clap part, I might put a splash cymbal. Or I could even just put like a towel on it. That's sort of the real super dry 70s thing. For drums, the hardest thing is, is probably is playing slow. I think that is true for probably any instrument, but it's really hard to play slow and stay slow and not sound like you're solving a math problem while you're doing it. Um, to have any kind of emotional connection without speeding up is, is difficult to do. So um, one of my favorite like meditative things to work on is like a slow like ballad in three. So you could play that accurately in a technical sense, but if you're not breathing in the space while you're playing it and giving it gravity, then it's not going to connect. Any drum beat you do, even if it's simple, should sound like complete music by itself. Such Gold is a band from upstate New York. It's a punk rock band. One good example would probably be this song called uh, Storyteller, which starts with a pretty basic, uh, albeit a little faster, uh, uh, rock beat, and it does a lot of shifting back and forth between, between fields. And I don't have any other band, I can't say I've played in any other band that has like a, a song where the drums are like this. crazy thing happens where you zone in on it is a little bit of like a meditative aspect when you're trying to really focus on your thing and at some point when your brain has been clear for a long time and the band's been playing with you for a long time there's this amazing aha thing where all of a sudden everybody's like finally gotten onto this one wavelength and it can be the simplest thing in the world if that wavelength is, is nailed, it's completely sublime. <laughs>